Welcome to Workshop Topics using a multi-size collet chuck in my smart and brown lathe. I've owned this high quality collet chuck for many years but I seldom use it in my videos as most viewers will not have one like this. It is quite unlike a standard collet chuck as the collets hold multiple sizes of bar stock. First of all though, I want to show the lathe that I use with it. My old but good smart and brown lathe model 1024. The following video clips show when it was moved into the new workshop. This is a clip from one of the previous videos I made about moving the lathe. The first one was just getting it to the door from inside my workshop and that took four and a half hours with a crowbar and bits of wood and metal rollers. And it actually went through the workshop's inner door with one eighth of an inch to spare. That's because I built the inner wall and inner door to the workshop when this old and large smart and brown lathe was already in there. And now, five years later. This is a four-jaw self-centering chuck. It's quite large and it's the one that I normally use with the Smart and Brown. It currently has the external jaws fitted from the last job I used it on. Note that I've put some substantial pieces of wood underneath the chuck before I release it. This chuck is fitted to the spindle using a D14 cam lock system. Very simple and easy to use. It's a much better system than screwing a chuck onto a threaded spindle. This chuck really is very heavy and I'm being very careful not to drop it on my toes. And I'm taking great care not to trap my fingers underneath it either. I've still got a fair bit of strength left despite my age and medical conditions and I placed the chuck on a substantial stool at the side of the lathe. In this clip I'm cleaning the nose of the spindle because I don't want any metal particles between the cam lock fitting and the chuck itself. The whole point of this chuck is that it's very accurate and it must be perfectly flat against the cam lock mounting. This is how it all locks together. Very clever, very simple. I'm rotating the cams that pull the chuck firmly onto the plate. And as you can see from this clip, there are three of them. The cam locks need to be tight. If they're slack, you have a problem. The chuck key for this beautiful collet chuck is different to a normal chuck key. It's quite old now, I bought it over 40 years ago. Where's the time gone? It's been sat in the box for quite a long time, so here I'm giving it a little bit of a clean before I use it, with a piece of Scotch-Brite on a piece of wood. It's looking much better already. This chuck and its collets sit in a couple of boxes next to my Myford lathe, and here is what it says on the box. I especially like the maximum capacity being one and a half inches, this is a serious piece of workshop equipment. The collet that I need to select needs to accommodate quarter of an inch. But being a multi-size collet system, each collet will hold more than one size, which is very useful. Each of the collets is quite a complex device. Nothing rattles about and all of the jaws are spring-loaded. This collet chuck is a very heavy-duty solid piece of equipment. It's about six inches long, including the removable collar, and about five inches wide. It's a beautifully engineered piece of equipment. I once bought an ER40 collet system that was so bad I threw it in the bin. This is nothing like that. I'm not saying that all ER40 collets are rubbish, but the ones I bought were. On each multi-size collet are the sizes you can use with it. And of course, any size in between the two sizes engraved on the front of the collet. This one goes from one eighth of an inch diameter to a quarter of an inch which is 3.2 millimetres to 6.4. And needless to say, the collet will hold anything of a diameter that is between those sizes. Here I've fitted a piece of stainless steel bar. It's one thou under a quarter of an inch, which surprises me, it's supposed to be quarter of an inch, but you can't have everything. In this video are some previews as to what I'm going to be doing. I would always use this collet chuck for making axles, because the thing is, apart from being accurate, if you remove the axle to try it in place and put it back in the collet, it's perfectly concentric. Quite unlike a three-jaw or even a four-jaw self-centering chuck. I'm actually making a piston rod and first of all I took a test cut followed by applying some cutting oil and then turning it all the way down. I need two BA threads of different lengths at each end of this piece of stainless steel. The marking out as usual is a little bit haphazard. As long as I don't cut any further than the end of the thick felt-tip pen line, it will be fine. 
I'm not going to show too much of this in this video because in episode 67 of how to build a Blackgate Sweet P 5 inch gauge locomotive I will be showing the making of a complete piston rod. And that is it for this one. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.